Before there was heavy metal, there was Black Sabbath, arising from the ashes of the bleak industrial landscape of post-war Britain. Ozzy Osbourne, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler and Bill Ward charted a new course in the harder blues rock of Britain. With the release of the lead single from their second studio album, Paranoid, Black Sabbath codified the sound which would become heavy metal music. Hello there, it's Warren Hewitt. I hope you're doing marvellously well. Welcome back to another episode of the series. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. And if you're into production, you can go to Produce Like a Pro and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Black Sabbath was formed in Birmingham, England in the late 60s. Tony Iommi led with guitar and flute. Ozzy Osbourne took lead vocals and harmonica. Terry Giza Butler played bass and Bill Ward covered the drums. Ward explained that much of their inspiration came from the rough childhood of industrial urban life in an area still struggling with the aftermath of World War II bombings. We came from a place called Aston in Birmingham. We're proud of it. A lot of people condemn it because it was a rough part of town, but that's what I knew when I was a kid and it was home. The fact that it was like that when we were kids gave us aggression to succeed. It's a very heavy industrial section, and when you see your fathers just working themselves to death, you say you want to improve yourself, and the only way to do it was to be in a band. The band released their self-titled debut in 1970, and although it took several months to be released in the US, it ended up on the charts on both sides of the Atlantic. The first album premiered Black Sabbath's signature heavy sound to the world. The industrial sounds of their childhood not only affected them psychologically, but also physically. At the age of only 17, Iommi lost several of his fingertips in a factory accident while working on a guillotine-like press. Iommi actually plays guitar with prosthetic fingertips, which he originally fashioned for himself out of necessity. Inspired by the guitar playing of Django Reinhardt, Iommi first tried to create prosthetic fingertips out of melted-down soap bottle, but couldn't grip the strings. Still, the injury affected his ability to play quickly, and he had to develop new ways to make sound on his instrument. In doing so, he began playing simple but full-sounding chords, which became the iconic sound of the band. He explained the injury was, What made me sort of come up with the Black Sabbath thing? The sound. Because it's trying to make the sound bigger to fill in the full chords that I couldn't play anymore. Pairing Iommi's guitar playing with Butler's bass style brought an even fuller texture to the band's sound. Butler had played rhythm guitar before switching to bass for the band, and thus modelled his experience with a six-string instrument. He explained, And because I've never followed anybody else before on bass, I've never learned anyone else's bass lines. So when it came to writing our own stuff, I sort of went along with what the guitar riff was playing. Then I'd write riffs on my bass, and that sort of evolved into the Sabbath sound, really. Black Sabbath is an album, and a single stopped listeners in their tracks but it was the lead single from their second album released only a few months later, which would change everything. Paranoid. <laughs> Paranoid opens with an iconic guitar riff, a rite of passage for every aspiring guitar player. So I don't have an SG. I wish I did. I wish I had Tony's SG. It's just absolutely beautiful. That guitar is great. I've seen um, Black Sabbath many times. And they've always been incredible live and so much fun to watch. Now, what I've got is I've got the Laney sound, which is like the reissue. It's the 30 watt version of the original amp. Now, my good friend Ollie Alcock, who was in a band called England, late 60s, early 70s, has two of the original of these amps, the first ones ever made. Ollie, you promised me I could get one of those one day. And actually was friends with Tony. He's also left-handed like Tony. And I don't know, but I almost feel like that you need a treble booster to get the exact sound. But what, what I've done is I've got something approximate. Obviously, I don't have the SG, but I have this guitar here. This PRS, the Vela, it's the closest I could get of all the guitars we've got. I'm also using, just because it's Tony's pedal, I'm using the Black Country Customs. Uh, which is the monolith pedal. So if I take the pedal off, you've got the... Put 
put the pedal on and I'm, I'm boosting a lot of high end, trying to emulate what might have been a treble booster going to the amp, I don't know. So, I mean, it's just a lot of energy. I really, really love this pedal. It's got three different settings on here. I mean, everything Tony Iommi I love. I've, yeah, I really want to get one of his SGs now. I've just taught myself into it. So if I just take that pedal off for a second because it's super overdriven. Now you've got the riff, which is just iconic. And it's that hammer on, you just have to make it sound evil. You know, it's just so cool. And then, then the chug. But the riff, again, is one of the greatest rock and roll metal guitarists of all time. Iconic, and that's coming from a band that has loads of iconic guitar riffs. Between um, Giza and Tony, they came up with so many amazing guitar and bass riffs, but that one is just, it's one of the greatest ever written. Great work, Tony, and thank you for changing rock music history. It's this guitar riff which actually inspired the whole song. The band needed a song quickly, and they used Iommi's guitar riff to kick it off. Butler told Guitar World in 2004, Paranoid was written as an afterthought. We basically needed a three-minute filler for the album, and Tony came up with a riff. I quickly did the lyrics, and Ozzy was reading them as he was singing. Ozzy's signature vocal whine carries itself above the deep, heavy drive of the guitars and drums. I need someone to show me the According to Butler, the song's dark, anxiety-filled lyrics depict the experience of drugs and depression. Basically, it's just about depression, because I didn't really know the difference between depression and paranoia. It's a drug thing. When you're smoking a joint, you get totally paranoid about people. You can't relate to people. There's this crossover between the paranoia you get when you're smoking dope and the depression afterwards. The paranoia of the lyrics falls in line with our current expectations for a Black Sabbath track, dark and mysterious. The band has often been associated with the occult, but band members have stated several times that the music came first, and that the dark lyrical themes derive from an attempt to match the sound of the music. Iommi told Record Mirror in 1970, We were never into black magic. The lyrics were chosen to go with the heavy music. It wasn't an intentional black magic thing. The entire Paranoid album was recorded at Regent Sound Studios and Island Studios in London, England, only a few months after the release of their debut album. It was produced by Roger Bain, also known for his work with Judas Priest, Budgie and Barclay James Harvest. Paranoid was released in August of 1970, a month ahead of their second studio album of the same name. The album wasn't released in the US for a few months, finally hitting the market on January the 7th, 1971. Its exhilarating dark sound captivated audiences and critics alike, and along with Zeppelin II and Deep Purple in Rock, has been credited with establishing the sound which became known as heavy metal. Prior to the 70s, heavy metal was a scientific and often medical term, referring to poisonous compounds and their effects. But as rock music got darker and heavier at the start of the decade, rock journalists like Lester Bangs and Dave Marsh started to apply the term to bands like Black Sabbath. And with the massive success of songs like Paranoid, this heavy metal musical compound inspired generations of hard-rocking bands to follow in their footsteps. 
Paranoid has become a mainstay of the story of heavy metal's history and one of the genre's most important songs that changed music. I can't really express how important this song is. I think it's one of the first guitar parts I ever tried to learn at 15. What is interesting is the, the guitar sound of Tony's SG through his, I think it was probably a 60 or 70 watt Laney, one of the early ones that they made. It's so much bigger and fatter than you think because when you play it up on the 12th fret like he does, it sounds thin and weedly if you don't have that guitar sound. I always assumed, I think many of us did as kids, that it was an open E string playing it lower. It wasn't. It's just the way he plays, his guitar sound and everything just makes it sound so dangerous. When I was a kid, it was the first guitar part I wanted to learn. It, it was 80s when I picked up the guitar for the first time, but I still wanted that 1970 guitar part, that 1970 guitar sound. It's one of those few guitar parts that really, really sticks in your mind. Between that and probably Communication Breakdown. But to be honest, Communication Breakdown, that do 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 down 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 is great. Don't get me wrong, but that round 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 bound out it bound out it wound down down, and then when Geezer comes in, boom boom, ah, all your hairs stand on end just thinking about it, and the and the vocal managers, it's the perfect song for every single band to cover. Every metal band I ever worked with, ever played with when I was a kid, we all learned that track. You could just turn up and we'd all play it slightly wrong. <laughs> I did for years, for decades. But that was a rite of passage. It really is the rite of passage for any metal guitar player worth their salt. If they don't play that song, they're probably not a metal fan. Anyway, thank you ever so much, Tony, for such a great guitar part. Thank you all the rest of the guys for just writing an amazing song. Love everything about it. What other songs do you believe really changed music? This one's undeniable. Nobody can argue with it. This is one of the most important metal tracks of all time. What else speaks to you like that? What other song, what other album, what other band speaks to you that you really feel passionate about that changed music? Please leave it down below. Thanks ever so much for watching. So long. Farewell. La vie de Zay and au revoir. Adios. Goodbye.